Hi, this video is going to take a look at the average rate of change. So the average rate of change is how much y is changing divided by how much x changes. So when we look at that in linear functions, um, that's the slope, which um, stays the same throughout the whole function. So anywhere we take a look at the average rate of change in a linear function, it's going to be the same. Now we're going to take a look at average rate of change in nonlinear functions and see that it depends on where we are on the function of what that average rate of change is. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at the average rate of change. So the average rate of change is either going to be the change in y divided by the change in x. Sometimes you'll see that written delta y over delta x, which just means change. Or you can see it y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if you have the xy coordinates, uh, we would find the change in y by subtracting the two y's, and we would find the change in x by subtracting the two x's. Or you might also see it as the change in output divided by the change in input. So let's first take a look at that in a linear function. So if we have two points on a linear function, we can see how much y changes. In this case, it's 4. And how much x changes. So in this case, it's 2. And we can divide those, get the average rate of change is 4 over 2, or just 2. Now if we look at two other points on the linear equation, here we would go up by 6, over by 3. So the change in y would be 6. The change in x would be 3 divide those two and we get the same thing too. So we can call this the average rate of change or in a linear function we can just call it the rate of change because it's the same anywhere on that function. Now let's take a look at a nonlinear function. So if we have two points, again we're going to do the change in y over the change in x. So the change in y in this particular case is minus 8. We have to go down 8 and then we've got to go over 4. So we find the average rate of change, it's negative 8 over 4, or negative 2. But if we were to take two points somewhere else, in this case we would have to go up by 6 and over by 2, and the average rate of change would be 6 over 2, or 3. So we are not going to get the same average rate of change depending on where we are on the curve. So we can't say it's the average rate of change of the whole function. We instead have to say that it's on an interval. So for the first one, we said it's the average rate of change on the interval of negative 3 to 1. And that is negative 2. And the second one we looked at, that's the average rate of change on the interval from 3 to 5. And we get the average rate of change there being 3. Now another way to look at those is we can connect those two points and we want to find the slope of that line. So those two points that are connected there, the slope of that line is going to be negative 2, and the slope of the other one is going to be 3. So the slope of the line gets us the average rate of change, and we call those lines secant lines. Okay, let's look at some problems that have to do with average rate of change. So in the first problem, we're given a graph. We're asked to find the average rate of change over a few different intervals. So first from negative 6 to negative 3. So from negative 6, that's going to be here, to negative 3, which is here. And we just figure out what the change in y and change in x is going to be. So for change in y, we're going to go 8 that's the change in y, and the change in x is going to be 3, so we get 8 thirds. From negative 3 to 0, we've got to go 3 and 3, so 3 over 3, or 1. Now from 0 to 3, so from 0 to 3, we're going to go to here. So we've got to go over 3 and down 3. So it's going to be negative 3 over 3, or negative 1. 
and then from three to six, down to here. We're gonna go over three and down eight. So it's gonna be negative eight is our change in Y and positive three is our change in X. So negative eight thirds. So those are all the average rate of changes on those different intervals. All right, the next problem asks us to compare the average rate of changes, compare the average rate of changes from 1980 to 2010. So from 1980 to 2010, and compare that with the average rate of change from 2010 to 2020. So from 1980 to 2010, our change in Y over our change in X. So our change in Y is gonna be 22,000 minus 13,000. And our X, or the year, we can put these here if this helps, X and Y. Uh, our year is gonna go from 1980 to 2010. So 2010 minus 1980. So we got 30. And in the numerator, we've got 9,000. And when we divide, we get 300. So that's the average rate of change from 1980 to, to 2010. So from 2010 to 2020, our change in Y over change in X is gonna be 26,000 minus 22,000. And the year is going to change from 2020 minus 2010. So we're going to get 4,000 over 10 or 400 is a change in population per year. So if you take the, um, the Y label and the X label, then that'll be the units is population per year. That's a change in population per year. So that's how the two compare. All right, in the last problem, we're asked to find an average rate of change over an interval, uh, but we're given an equation. So the interval is from x equals two to x equals six. That's our interval. X is changing over this interval from two to six. So when x is 2, y is going to be 2 squared plus 8 over 4. I'm just putting 2 into the function, which is going to equal 4 plus 8 over 4, which is 12 over 4, or 3. Now when x is 6, y is going to be 6 squared plus 8 over 4, or 36 plus 8 over 4, which is 44 over 4, which is 11. So that gives us the x and y for both points. So now we want to find the average rate of change, which is going to be the change in y over the change in x. So y is going from 3 to 11. So y is changing by 11 minus 3, where the x is going from 2 to six, so six minus two. So now we subtract these, 11 minus eight, I mean, 11 minus three is eight, six minus two is four, so our average rate of change over that interval is gonna be two. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments on this video or suggestions for future videos, just comment below. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. And I've got another suggestion for you to watch right here. Thank you and come back again soon.